Coming up in this episode, a real triple threat project, quilting, embroidery, and sewing. So stay tuned. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how I made these really cute quilted cosmetic bags with a custom monogram embroidery. For those of you following along with the Learn to Sew in 2020 series, yes, this is a great beginner sewing project. You only need a little bit of fabric, quilt batting, and of course a zipper. I do use the Brother CS7000i sewing machine for most of it. Of course, there is the embroidery on the front and I did use the Brother PE800. You don't need to have the embroidery on it. This is an optional step. You could also do hand embroidery or you could use like an iron on transfer. So if you don't have an embroidery machine, it's really not that big of a deal. I ended up doing some batch sewing and made four of these because they're going to be gifts. And I'm gonna slip in some lip balm as a surprise. So come along with me as we make these cosmetic bags. Oh yeah, and stay tuned to the end of this video because we're gonna do some real talk and chat about the quarantine. Starting off with a larger piece of cotton scrap fabric with quilt batting underneath. We're going to be quilting the fabric with a diamond pattern. To do this, you'll need a quilting ruler and a water-soluble marking pen. The Creative Grids ruler has a 60-degree angle that I lined up against the edge to create the first line. Then I spaced out and marked every two inches in one direction. After that, I repeated these steps in the opposite direction. Here's what it looks like with all the marking lines drawn. The actual quilting part will take a while at the sewing machine. Use a walking foot if you have one as it will help feed the layers evenly. For this project, I used a heavier 12 weight R fill thread with a size 100 over 16 needle and a 4.0 stitch length. Sew directly on top of all the marked lines and take your time. This took me a couple hours but I put on some music and powered through. Check out this beautiful quilting. From here, I trimmed the edges and subcut into pieces that measured 10 and a half inches wide by six inches high. On the pieces you want to embroider, mark out center lines for placement. Let's get to hooping. I'm using two types of stabilizer and will be floating the quilted fabric instead of hooping it directly. Hoop a piece of cutaway stabilizer tightly. Cover the hoop itself with strips of painter's tape. Place into a bag with the top cut off or cardboard box for a makeshift spray station. Apply temporary fabric adhesive to the stabilizer. Remove the tape. Carefully place the quilted fabric on the stabilizer, lining up the marks on the fabric with the center markings on the hoop. Put tape strips back on the hoop sides and spray the fabric with adhesive. In the center, place a sheet of water-soluble stabilizer. Now we'll embroider the monogram on the PE800 machine. I'm using the Vine Monogram Embroidery font, size 2 inches with the center letters. Tension set at 3.6 and tried out this fun Aqua 50 weight thread from the Cotton and Steel collection. The set was supplied to the sewing report by Sulky. You can adjust the starting needle position to make sure the design is centered on the marking lines. This was my first time embroidering with cotton thread and it stitched out nicely. Because 50 weight is a lighter thread, the stitching appears somewhat sparse, but there's a way to fix that without manipulating the design. After the design finishes stitching out, keep the hoop where it's at and just repeat the same design a second time. It will double the density of the stitching. Rip off the water-soluble stabilizer, unhoop the fabric, and cut away most of the stabilizer on the back. Here is everything you need to make the zipper pouch cosmetic bags. 
two quilted fabric and two lining pieces all measuring 10 and a half by 6 inches, a 9 inch zipper, and a small scrap for the zipper tab that's 1 inch by 2 and a half inches. For years I've been trying to get neater zipper ends on pouches and bags. This time I used a method by Svetlana Sotak and it worked out pretty well. I'll link her channel here and in the description box. With the zipper closed, on the side with the pull apply some Fabri-Tac glue and fold back the ends like this. They'll look like wings. For the zipper tabs, fold the ends of the fabric in about a half inch on each short side and press. Then fold in half and press again. Enclose the zipper end with the stop into the tab. Use the Fabri-Tac glue to keep it in place until you take it to the sewing machine and top stitch close to the edge. To cut down on bulk, I clipped off the ends of the zipper inside the tab. Now let's start constructing the actual pouch. Position the zipper over the front quilted piece, then secure with glue. Do the same for the lining piece, making sure the zipper is about halfway open. Sew with the quarter inch seam allowance. Before you get to the zipper pull, stop. Lift the presser foot and pull the zipper all the way closed. Continue sewing the rest of the length. Fold and press the fabric back. Top stitch about 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. You will need to move the zipper pull halfway. Repeat those steps for the other side. Leave the zipper at least halfway open. Pull the quilted fabric and lining right sides together. Clip or pin the quilted fabric side. At the zipper, the teeth should be facing away from the main fabric like this. On the lining side, I glued the pieces in place, leaving about four to five inches for turning later. With a quarter inch seam allowance, sew all around the perimeter except for the opening in the lining. Remove the clips as you go. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Unpick the seams with glue if you chose that method. To box the corners, pinch them together and mark out a half inch from the end point. Secure with wonder clips. Sew on the marked line with back stitching. Clip away the excess seam allowance on the corners about a quarter inch from the stitch line. Carefully turn the bags right side out and gently press out the corners with your fingers. Fold in the raw fabric at the opening and either pin or glue shut. Sew that portion closed with your stitches about an eighth inch away from the edge. Ooh. 
tuck the lining back into the bag. Here's what it looks like done, but there's still leftover stabilizer and marks to get rid of. I filled up a plastic basin with water and squirted in a little soak laundry wash. It's no rinse and smells amazing, although the scent is subtle and not overpowering. Submerge the cosmetic pouches and leave them for about 15 minutes. Squeeze out the excess water and either lay flat to dry or pop into the dryer on low heat for about 20 minutes. If they get a little wrinkly, gently steam and press with your iron. For an easy zipper pull, I used colorful rubber bands and threaded them through a small opening with fishing line. Okay, so in full disclosure, I'm shooting this really late on a Friday night, but I don't really have a choice because I'm gifting these bags tomorrow so I had to take my chance. For some reason, I feel like I spent way too much time on my hair and makeup just to shoot a video for like 20 minutes, but it is what it is. When you're under quarantine and you're home alone, you do what you're gonna do, right? As of right now, and I'm shooting this around the beginning of May, we've been under quarantine here in Florida for about six weeks. I don't know how y'all are holding up. I'm doing okay. Although I have to admit, you probably noticed this, my hair is getting really out of control. I haven't had a haircut since December of 2018, and I've been harassing my husband to try to give me a haircut just because there's hair everywhere. I just cannot get this thing under control. So I'm trying my best, and I did spend a substantial amount of time trying to uh, tame the mane, uh, but I don't think it's working and things are going everywhere. I'm finding hair like all over the place, and this might be a little TMI, but I have a handheld vacuum just for my hair. Some other things you probably didn't wanna know about, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. While making the cosmetic bags, I think I listened to about 20 hours of BTS songs. I'm, I'm not joking. I feel like I'm starting to go a little bit crazy, but again, I've been doing this self-quarantine thing since like 2017, so this is kind of my lifestyle. So I don't really know what's happening, uh, but I've been watching way too many BTS music videos and K-dramas. Currently, I'm watching a K-drama called, uh, there's two titles, it's called either Beautiful Gong Shim or uh, Dear Fair Lady Kong Shim. I'm not sure if her last name begins with a G or a K, I've seen it both ways. I'm not like a Korean expert, even though I am Korean. If you are Korean out there and you know, are K and G kind of interchangeable as letters? I don't even know, but this one's kind of weird and the girl wears a wig, like a really bad wig for apparently like the whole K-drama, which is getting really annoying and everyone in the comments on Vicky is also getting annoyed, but apparently she only takes off the wig in the last episode and I'm like, girl, take off the wig. The wig is honestly horrible. It's not doing her any favors. It's very unflattering and I, everyone watching that is commenting in real time on Vicky, like they cannot get past the wig. So I'm watching the K-drama, I'm gonna give it a chance but I'm on episode three and I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. For some unknown reason, today's eye makeup is inspired by BTS's Jimin and his signature smoky eye. I don't know why I'm trying to copy a guy's eye makeup, but you know, here I am. And I, I spent a considerable amount of time on this for no reason whatsoever. I even use liquid liner, which is not something I ever do but I did today. I don't think I got the look down completely, but I am very envious of Jimin's eye makeup and I feel a little bit sad that I'm a girl and I cannot get my makeup to look as good as his. Also, I've decided that my new life dream is to somehow get a part, even like a walk-on part or an extra on a K-drama. That would be so incredible. I don't know how to make it happen or what I need to do, but if anyone out there is watching and you are a PD for a K-drama, please, let me be part of it. I don't know what I'll do. I'll play the crazy ex or whatever. I don't care, but I would love to be in a K-drama and I, I don't know how to make that happen. So yeah, if you've been watching this channel and wondering about my sanity, consider this your validation and yes, I'm probably nuts. Enough about that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Let me know below in the comments what have you been making lately and how have you been spending your time during this quarantine? What's helping you keep your sanity? And you know, what have, what have you guys been up to? Let me know how you're doing. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys in the next video.